So it goes here to here to here to here to um uh, this is gonna get rough. <laughs> Hi guys, Pat Crane here and welcome back inside my studio. Now this time around, we are actually going to be taking a look at audio routing and as I was breaking it down over this last week, I decided that I would split it up in two uh, because this is kind of a meaty subject and there are definitely two different types of audio routing. There is the software kind and then there is the hardware kind. The software kind is a lot easier to understand. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot less frustrating than the hardware side of it. So let's tackle that first. Why are we routing audio in the first place? We are routing audio to make sure that we have the flexibility and control that we need to be able to produce our show the way that we, that we want to. So if you're recording into mumble, you're not gonna need to know, know any of this stuff at all. If you're recording directly into uh, like a Google Hangout, perfect, you're done. Stop watching now. But if you wanna learn the how to maximize your flexibility and control with your audio signals, this is gonna be one segment out of a couple that you're probably gonna wanna watch. Audio routing is essentially this taking one or more audio sources, combining them in some way to send the signal to another audio device for input. Uh, so it would be like taking your microphone and putting it into your recorder. That is one example of audio routing. We are, we are gonna be going a little bit more complex than that. Uh, so this is uh, gonna get weird. So let's talk about the software that is involved for uh, both PC and for Mac. Now for PC, there's something called virtual audio cables. It's pretty slick, it's pretty cheap, and it's pretty easy. So I would recommend if you are looking to do something along these lines uh, and you have a PC already, get virtual audio cables, you'll be good to go. And those guys using Apple systems, well, you might be in for it. Uh, there's a reason that I do not do software audio routing, and that is because of Apple. For operating system 10.7, the folks over at Apple decided to fix something in the operating system that allowed other programs uh, to be able to read and redistribute audio uh, pathways via software. So there were a couple of software programs that I was using. One was Wiretap Anywhere. Uh, the other one was Soundflower. I was using a bunch of different things in order to make sure that this happened. and. After 10.6.8, which is the last time that it worked properly, 10.7, haven't been able to work it, so I came up with a hardware solution for my setup. Uh, you guys might be able to find a way to actually make it work. Make sure if you're, if you're getting any type of software for the Macintosh, make sure that you read all about that, uh, about the support for this particular application because things do change over time and this video is going to be around for a while, so please always make sure that you're reading all of the software support that you're gonna get and uh, whether or not it works with your particular system. When you're dealing with software, we're gonna be creating what we call aggregates. This is just aggregating the different sound sources uh, for use in different systems. Along these sound sources could be your microphone, it could be the soundboard, it could be Skype or Mumble or whatever your podcast partners are on. Uh, it could be your recording uh, program as well. All of these different things can be included into these aggregates. And as long as we're routing it the right way, it'll all be fine. You can also create multiple aggregates uh, in your software to be able to direct each, each little piece where to go. And I'll kind of explain along the way what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna be making some diagrams. So let's get into a software solution for you guys out there when this is gonna be fairly easy. So I'm picking up my iPad and I'm looking, oh yes, look, 
I have a wonderful microphone and a wonderful computer. Now my computer is going to be recording everything, right? So that's where that goes. And <laughs> this is pretty cheeseball. I know I'm a great artist. Um, and let's say that we also have uh, something over here. We'll have all of our sources over on this side. And this one is going to be Skype. And yes, I'm a wonderful uh, drawer. And then we also have a soundboard. So this is just going to be sound. There we go. And uh, the, the way that software works is that basically you tell it what to grab, it will grab it, and then your program, whatever program it is, will be able to read it, right? On one aggregate, we're gonna have, we're just gonna tell it, hey, you know what? You're seeing all this stuff. Why don't we grab the mic, the mic, microphone. We'll grab Skype. And we'll also grab the soundboard, soundboard. And then we're just going to have our recording program is going to read that. So it's just going to go right in the recording. There we go. And then we'll have another one down here where it's just the mic and the soundboard. And that's going to go to Skype. Why, is, why are we just going to have the microphone and the soundboard go to Skype and not the entire thing? That's to prevent an audio loop. We do not want any kind of feedback for, for the guys. We want to make sure that everything is understood clearly, and we do not want to send their own signal back to them at all, at all costs. We do not want them be doing that because it will totally mess with you, man. I tell you, if you have a signal that is uh, like a quarter of a second off from your own voice, it throws you off completely. Completely. It's bad. Uh, and so that's kind of the, the software solution. No matter how many different uh, sources you put in, no matter how many different sources you put in, you can always just like throw them into a big pile, right? And throw them into your recording system and you're going to be good to go. Now your recording program will be able to understand all of this information and break it out on a per track basis for the most part. You should be able to do this. Track one may be your microphone or tracks one and two could be the soundboard. I don't know exactly how it's going to roll out for you, uh, but your, your recording program should be able to break this down for you. And if you have uh, an option to record on multiple tracks, it will be able to grab a hold of all that information just fine and be able to parse it for you uh, once you get into the program. In Logic, there's a selector where you can actually say what tracks you want to grab from a specific uh, software program like this, from, a, from an aggregate. Uh, so you can say, I want track one, and track one just so happens to be the microphone, or track one just so happens to be Skype. No matter how it works out for you, you'll be able to kind of figure it out and be able to put all of your different sources on different tracks in your recording program. One of the things when setting up your aggregates is that you want to name them something appropriate, like for the stream or for recording or for Skype or for whatever the case may be, you might want to just label that to make sure that you know exactly what it is meant for so that when you come back to it as you're kind of routing your audio around, you know exactly where it's going to be going. And then what you'll be doing is you'll be setting your inputs or your outputs to these places uh, to make sure that they all work in harmony together. Okay, so now what do you do if you if there's a stream involved? All of a sudden you want to stream your stuff and you have your, the software stuff and you've got it set up and you kind of know how to work it. You've got all your tracks uh, matched up so you can record all these different multiple sources at once. Now let's throw a stream in there. All right, let's go back to our wonderful drawing. And we will say that we have in our one uh, aggregate, remember we're calling these aggregates, we have, uh, we have Skype, um, we, have, uh, we have our soundboard, we have our mic, and that is all being routed to our recording program. Very lovely. We also have our mic 
and the soundboard going to the input of Skype. That's right, so that the boys can hear what's going on, or girls, can hear what's going on and know exactly where we are in the program at all times uh, without any feedback loop. Remember that? No feedback loops, please. Uh, and now we also have a stream. The oh, We have, let me do a different color. We have the stream. Stream. The extreme stream. Okay. So how do we get to the stream? How do we get to the input of the stream? Well, we'll just take the output from our recording device and we'll just say that that goes in here. And then that will go into our stream. This is how easy it is to deal with different aggregates for, uh, for your program. If you're dealing with aggregating through software, uh, it becomes really easy and whimsical almost. It becomes fun. It becomes really a lot of fun. Uh, and if you wanted to for your stream as well, if you wanted to like put in, you want music before, uh, before and after the show or just kind of whenever, maybe you would also have, here, let me get a different color. I'll put in, I'll, I'll put in uh, yellow here. Uh, this one is going to be like iTunes. Like your 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 tunes, your music program, your MP3 player. Well, guess what? You could just throw that uh, into the recording right over here. You could throw iTunes in over here, and in with this whole thing, and then you can dump that into your stream. So now you have your recording. You have your iTunes separate, and that's just going out to the stream because you don't need to record that, right? You don't want to record that. That's just for music before and after. So then you can have music before and after, and it's all fine. It's all dandy. Are we kind of getting there? Hopefully you are, because uh, we're going to move along. And if you don't know, if you have questions about this, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will take a look at them and, and try to address them possibly in a future episode. So that's going to do it for this discussion on software audio routing. Please leave your comments and questions below, right down there, and subscribe. We're going to be talking about hardware audio routing at a later time so that you can recover from this discussion. But we're going to be using a lot of the same concepts. It's just it's very different when you start adding in physical wiring to the, to the equation because that is kind of a limiting factor. So we're going to have some workarounds for that stuff. I'm going to show you mixers. I'm going to show you more audio input-output devices. And... I'm going to really confuse people. So until then, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.